we vacationed in Orlando, Florida, we took a road trip of about an hour and a half to Busch Gardens, Tampa Bay. Longtime viewers will already know that our home park, the only theme park we have ever had annual passes for, is Busch Gardens Williamsburg. We've always been curious what its sister park, Busch Gardens Tampa Bay, is like, so we took a day of our trip to go check it out. While the park in Williamsburg is themed to European countries, this park in Tampa is themed to Africa and Asia. We're going to discuss the rides, the animals, and the experience, and let you know which Busch Gardens Park we think is better. I liked the African and Asian theming here. I'm not sure if it was better, but it was interesting to see something new after being used to seeing the same thing each visit in Williamsburg. There are numerous rides here that you will see are very similar, if not duplicate, versions of the ones in Williamsburg. So even though everything felt new because of the theming, it also felt a bit familiar at the same time. They have a train, like Busch Gardens Williamsburg does, so we started our day riding that to see what the park was like from our seat on the train. This gave us a good look at the rides, as well as our first view of the Serengeti, where we saw African and Asian animals, which we will share in a bit. Both Busch Gardens parks have Sesame Street themed kids areas. Here in Tampa, that area is called Sesame Street Safari of Fun. Here is the theater where they have some shows. The attractions included a Dumbo-style spinner ride, a treehouse where kids could run off some energy, a carousel, even a Grover-themed kitty coaster called Air Grover, just like Busch Gardens Williamsburg has, but with a different theming. I have seen Sesame Street theme park attractions both in Williamsburg and in the SeaWorld parks, but I've never met my favorite character as a child, Big Bird. He's just never been around at the same time that I was, but on this particular sunny day, Fortune favored me, finally, as I got to meet my hero from when I was a toddler, and it was wonderful. Okay, while Alice focused on meeting a giant bird, I focused more on the thrill rides. There are currently nine roller coasters at this park, though that includes the not-so-thrilling Air Grover over in the Sesame Street area. This is Iron Gwazi, a wood and steel hybrid coaster that has remained at or near the top of many coaster enthusiasts' list of best coasters since it opened a couple of years ago. It is awesome. Here's Cobra's Curse. It starts with an elevator that takes you 70 feet up in the air to come eye to eye with a giant serpent in Florida's first family spin coaster. This is Montu, a great inverted coaster where the train hangs beneath the track instead of running on top of it. This is Scorpion. It has a 360 degree loop. It's the oldest roller coaster still in operation in the park. Here, Tigris takes you backward and forward over the same short track 
almost exactly like Tempesto at Busch Gardens Williamsburg or the Electric Eel at SeaWorld San Diego. We have videos of both of those parks, which we will link at the end of this one. Shikra is the park's dive coaster with a 200-foot drop, which was the tallest and fastest dive coaster ever when it was built. Until two years later, when the taller, faster, but otherwise similar Griffin was built at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Kumba is another fun ride that has interlocking corkscrews. Cheetah Hunt is a really fun family coaster themed to cheetahs. It happens to be right next to the cheetah habitat. Animal habitats are a really big part of this park, as we'll show you in a moment. Another thrill ride is Falcon's Fury a 335-foot drop ride that actually tilts you downwards so you're facing the ground as you begin your descent. I passed on that one. And there are other fun rides that are a little less thrilling, like a rapids ride, a log flume, and bumper cars. We've got more to show you, but if you're enjoying the visit so far, please click the like button to register your positive feelings with YouTube. And click the link in the description below to visit my Amazon affiliate page. Click around and see what products we suggest as you travel. If you click on the link and then order anything off of Amazon, I will get a small commission to help keep this show on the road, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Thanks for your support. We had lunch at Serengeti Overlook, a food hall with a few different food options inside. There was a lot of seating inside in the air conditioning here. Jack ordered his lunch at Oasis Pizza. He got a pepperoni pizza for $15.49, which he really enjoyed, and a refillable cup so that he could get unlimited drink refills the rest of the day for $19.99. I ordered at the Giraffe Bar and got this delicious mac and cheese topped with brisket. I also had a tasty drink. I ordered the sparkling Madagascar Mojito, which contains tequila, spicy pineapple, and lime. It was really good and not too spicy. Opening soon in the Serengeti Overlook is Treetop Kitchen, which will serve Latin American as well as African cuisine. We ate our lunch in the air conditioning with a window view of the Serengeti, where we got a good view of the giraffe habitat in the distance, which is why the bar near where we sat is called the Giraffe Bar. There were a lot of other animals too. For an extra charge, you could ride out in a safari vehicle for relatively close encounters with the animals. There were also a number of behind-the-scenes experience with some of the animals that you could purchase for an extra cost as well. Even though we didn't pay anything extra, we still got to see lots of animals on the train and in walk-through animal trails. So we'll say more about this experience in a moment, but first, here's an animal montage.
This was really cool. We got to see the keepers working with the gorillas. They use sign language to get the gorillas to interact with them, which helps the keepers to be able to look them over and make sure they're in good health. It was fascinating to watch. Even though we didn't pay for the behind the scenes tortoise tour, we got to see some of the interactions that people who were on the tour got to have with a huge, nearly 500 pound algebra tortoise. I loved getting to see this and several other giant tortoises up close during our visit. For an extra $19.99 per person, you get to pet a tortoise, take your picture with one, and then hear the keepers talk for about 20 minutes about their care. So what is the verdict? We think Busch Gardens Williamsburg is a more beautiful park. Jack loves thrill rides, but it's kind of a tie between the two parks there. They have about the same number of thrill rides, and both parks have a good variety of thrill rides. It is worth noting the Busch Gardens Williamsburg has more rides overall when you count all the flat rides, family rides, and kids rides. You can have fun animal encounters in both parks, but the Tampa Park has a lot more animals. Long before Disney's Animal Kingdom was not a zoo, Busch Gardens Tampa Bay was an hour and a half away from Disney property, providing park visitors with great animal experiences. So based on that, my favorite is actually the Tampa Park, though I do love Busch Gardens Williamsburg as well. Jack prefers the Williamsburg Park, though he does wish Iron Gwazi was up in Virginia instead of here in Florida. Click the link at the end of this video to see our visit to SeaWorld San Diego or to check out our Busch Gardens Williamsburg playlist. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. Be sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so we can see you the next time we're traveling through.